Hello and welcome to our webinar. Today we're going to be talking about how Iceland Air was able to leverage APN partner IBM and the Spectrum Protect product along with AWS to streamline their backup deployment. My name is Isaiah Weiner. I'm a Senior Manager of Solutions Architecture and the partner organization at AWS. And we have just a few housekeeping items to take care of initially. Um, the deck and the recording will be sent out via email to all participants uh, in two to three days. We have an analyst paper uh, from ESG that's available for download in the handout section. And we'll have a live Q&A session following the webinar. So feel free to submit all of your questions in the questions panel located in the control panel at any time throughout the webinar, and we'll address them uh, live during the Q&A portion. So we have some great guest speakers today, uh, starting with uh, APN partner IBM. We have uh, Greg uh, Tevis. He's um, just like an AWS solution architect uh, on the IBM side. Um, we have Peter um, uh, Eferson. Eferson. So he is uh, from our consulting partner, um, uh, Niheri. And we also have Elisabeth uh, Hauser's daughter, and she's from Iceland Air. And what they're going to be talking to us about today um, is actually about an on-prem to the cloud uh, scenario uh, involving backup and recovery. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the thing about backup and recovery is that it's the kind of thing that is often uh, low enough risk that people take it as that low-hanging fruit for moving to the cloud. And the reason is because the, the subject of backup and recovery over time um, is about being able to fulfill something that doesn't necessarily have to happen all the time uh, in the sense that uh, restores are things that are often tested uh, periodically. Um, and uh, uh, it's not the same kind of SLA that internal IT groups have to satisfy um, uh, you know, amazing availability for, uh, such as in the case of uh, production uh, systems on the front line. Um, now, a lot of people say, well, backups, that's just another copy of the data, isn't it? Well, it, it is and it isn't. Um, what makes backups unique and, and disparate from just having another copy of the data is that it's point in time consistent uh, of, uh, from, from the, the point when the, the, the backup's actually taken, um, and it's cataloged. And so the catalog part is really important because it gives you the ability to search and be able to do point in time restores. So obviously, if you, uh, if you didn't have that point in time consistency, things like applications and databases and file systems all being out of sync with each other um, could be pretty problematic. Um, and so when people look at their backup infrastructure, um, uh, sometimes they think a copy of the data is fine. Sometimes they think, well, you know, one copy is good, but two copies is better. Uh, but at the same time, how do you mitigate the cost factor for uh, having to store so many copies of data? And it can really add up, especially if you talk about in the backup world, retaining um, a lengthy period of time for, for daily backups, whether they're full or incremental, uh, retaining weekly backups, monthly backups, and, and sometimes people retain you know, monthly backups for, for even seven years. Uh, and so in those scenarios, um, technologies like deduplication really come into play. Uh, when we talk about the recovery component, uh, it turns out that 75% of resource scenarios have a lot to do with user error. Um, and so there's uh, not only uh, inadvertent um, uh, deletion of data, uh, but also bad actor scenarios that backup administrators and IT organizations have to combat against. So when it comes to being able to do a restore, it's not just about it being quick, it's also about it being correct uh, and having the right set of tools um, so that when you actually go to do your restore, um, you're not left sorting out all the bits that you've restored some of them you need, some of them you don't. You really want the tool to do all of that for you. Um, and then lastly, um, how do you make sure that it's reproducible? You want your restore to be something that's easy to do at 3 in the morning on a Friday uh, when, when you realize that you've got a problem. So the challenges that people start off with when it comes to backup uh, and the reason that they go looking for the cloud and, and partners of AWS is that they, they often say, well, I've got copies of things, but it's not a real backup, so how do I get a real backup? And then they go off and they install some sort of backup suite, and they say, well, all right, now I've got a real backup, but it's a manual backup. So how do I integrate that with all of the rest of my automated processes? Um, 
cost is definitely a consideration. Uh, when people go to the cloud, they expect to pay less uh, and get more. Um, and when it comes to uh, compliance, if you came from a world where you might have had hardware appliances to satisfy requirements like worm or, or long-term archival, or if you're used to shipping tapes off to companies like Iron Mountain, um, you might have one vision of compliance. But being able to audit that compliance when it involves lots of people and lots of processes that aren't necessarily connected to each other is difficult. So when you move that to the cloud, you get the ability to actually uh, audit the processes in a, a digital fashion, which gives you much tighter uh, timelines around being able to know what's going on. It gives you the ability to scale. You can put everything in one place without having to worry about things getting lost or inadvertently deleted uh, by the system. Uh, you don't have to worry about capital expenditure because uh, you can apply an OPEX model to all of the costs associated with the cloud technologies. Uh, and you get new security options. Whereas before, when you might have had a hardware appliance taking care of things like Worm, you, um, you still had physical access to the device. So uh, being able to control access was, was limited. Um, you can set policies up in AWS that will truly secure the data um, even against uh, bad actor scenarios. So there's some building blocks inside of AWS that our partners take advantage of. Um, the most common one is definitely S3. It's sort of the Swiss Army knife of cloud storage, and it's uh, so popular uh, and so easy to use um, that other cloud providers and, and on-prem uh, object systems uh, imitate the S3 protocol. Um, it, it really gives you a lot of flexibility with a, a pretty limited set of verbs. Um, the, uh, the notion that S3 is sort of the place where people just throw storage is definitely one that is consistent um, even amongst the rest of the AWS building blocks. For example, AWS Storage Gateway presents an NFS uh, solution in one mode, an iSCSI LUN in another mode, a VTL iSCSI LUN in another mode. But what's consistent across all of those things is that at the end of the day, it throws everything into S3. Uh, and in order to take advantage of um, the Amazon infrastructure that's been built out since S3 was released, seven, all of our um, uh, points of presence, what we call edge locations that we use for CloudFront and Route 53 are, are distributed uh, uh, CDN and, and, uh, and DNS service. All of those locations have network traffic um, that gets optimized through our own backbones um, uh, or what people often refer to as the, the Amazon backhaul um, uh, into our regions. So services like Amazon S3 Transfer Acceleration can help you take advantage of uh, the sorts of, of bandwidth that you think you ought to get into these building blocks. Now, the thing about these building blocks is that they're just that, they're building blocks. Um, and it does, it's not limited to these. We have other, other services as well um, uh, available for interest. Um, but they, again, they're still building blocks. So where your uh, building block offering stop and where the uh, customer expectations uh, might, might continue to go on is how do I tie all these things together? So if you have um, an opportunity, if you have the time, if you have the staff, you can definitely glue these things together on your own. But if you already have an investment in something, for example, um, IBM Spectrum Protect, um, you'd be looking for IBM to be able to fill those gaps with integration points. Um, so they've, uh, for example, um, Snowball, right, or Snowball Edge. How can you kind of seed your backup if you're ready to go to the cloud? Imagine you have lots of tapes on premises and you're interested in going to the cloud. You have two options. You can either draw a line in the sand and say, I'm going to take everything in the future and I'm going to put it in the cloud. Or you can also say, I want to take the stuff that I've already backed up and cataloged and that I already know about and things that I already have an obligation to keep. Um, and I want to restore those uh, into my backup system and then back them up again uh, into the cloud. And so using the network is one way to do that. But at a certain point, especially at scale, if you're talking about hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of tapes, it starts to get a little impractical to think that your network can handle all of it. We don't all have uh, 10 gigabit connections to AWS regions. So that's where things like Snowball and Snowball Edge come in. We're at extreme scale, uh, the AWS Snowmobile, which is our um, shipping container uh, ingest tool. And then lastly, um, when you're looking at uh, things that are in the backup use case, there's a point where you say, you know, uh, 
I'm good with uh, it no longer being what I would consider to be backup data, uh, and I'm interested in um, maybe archiving it. So now, instead of keeping multiple copies of the data, I'm interested in only keeping just one copy of the data, and that's where uh, Amazon Glacier comes in. So uh, next, um, I think it's important uh, to talk about what uh, APN partners give to customers. Uh, a lot of people don't necessarily know what APN is um, or why uh, it's meaningful to them. Um, so APN stands for the Amazon Partner Network. We have uh, many partners, um, but in the backup and recovery space, we have uh, a program, uh, as large companies tend to have, um, to sort of sift uh, for customers uh, who are the uh, solution providers, such as uh, IBM uh, with the Spectrum Protect product, um, that are uh, stand out you know, for customers uh, in a variety of ways. Um, some of the things that we highlight for customers are an ease of deployment. Uh, we also highlight architecture that lends itself to um, good economics. Um, a lot of that has to do with um, IBM and the Spectrum Protect group following our best practices um, and uh, doing things in what we would often refer to as sort of the AWS idiomatic fashion, which is to say the, the way that everybody um, generally accepts things to be done. So when you're working with S3, for example, using relatively uh, good-sized objects, not really small um, objects. Um, making sure that in a hybrid scenario, for example, uh, that you can complete a backup and not be uh, limited by your network bandwidth um, by doing asynchronous replication in the background. Um, and reducing the amount of data that you actually need to send over the wire um, by doing what's often referred to as uh, incremental forever. So these are all things uh, that um, IBM has done uh, with Spectrum Protect. Spectrum Protect, if it doesn't sound familiar to you, you might know it by its former name, uh, TSM, Tivoli Storage Manager. Um, so IBM has rebranded uh, uh, TSM. Uh, Spectrum Protect is the new name. Um, but along with that, it's not just a rebranding. It's also um, a whole new generation of uh, features and um, integration points with AWS. Uh, in many cases, uh, these are features that uh, AWS customers uh, were sort of, you know, was sort of the natural next step. Customers were looking for this. A lot of folks had uh, TSM in previous versions on-prem, uh, and they said, well, I'm going to the cloud. I'd really love it if I could take my, you know, maybe multiple decades of expertise with this product um, and continue using it in the cloud. So uh, without further ado, We'll hand it over to Greg with IBM. Greg, thanks for joining, and uh, the webinar is yours. Okay, thanks, Isaiah. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining in um, this webinar on leveraging AWS for data protection and recovery. Isaiah has talked about, <clears throat> has given a quick overview of some of the great capabilities and benefits of Amazon Web Services for backup and recovery. I would like to talk and share with how um, AWS services are being leveraged effectively and extensively for data protection, data recovery, and business resiliency. This is being done by IBM, by IBM partners, by AWS partners in the APN network, and, and, and directly by our clients themselves, self-managing um, data protection with Spectrum Protect in, in the Amazon cloud. You're all aware of that, that cloud usage is, gl is growing rapidly. And um, Isaiah mentioned one of the drivers around that, which is cost containment. Um, here, here's a study by Enterprise Strategy Group, um, some results from a, a cloud study that they did uh, about a year ago. I think this was actually the end of 2015, uh, published last year. Uh, they are lead IT analysts. But this is showing how leveraging cloud services has become one of the top IT cost containment strategies. <clears throat> So, so we all know increase, uh, that cloud is increasingly being used for IT, but, but what are some of the top cloud use cases actually being deployed? Isaiah actually referred to this as, as low-hanging fruit for cloud. Um, and two of the top in the same cloud study by Enter Enterprise Strategy Group, uh, for actually over several years of, of a cloud study, they consistently pointed out that two of the top uh, use cases of, of, for any cloud infrastructure was data backup and archive and disaster recovery. 
And um, this is sh uh, showing that cloud is really a perfect match to be considered for various data protection, business resiliency, disaster recovery challenges. So what are some of the benefits that customers are, are deriving from using cloud and Amazon, say with uh, IBM Spectrum Protect, for example, for, for data protection services? Here are some of the top ones. I'll just go through a couple real quick. One is improved recoverability. And the key thing here is that you have dynamic with, with Amazon Web Services, you have dynamic infrastructure available from which to do you know, trivial recoveries um, or, or all the way up to you know, full uh, data center or, or site recovery. So this is very, very important um, and helps you improve the recoverability service levels. Improve, improved security could mean a number of things. It's not clear from this survey what, what um, this is implying. But from my discussions with many, many customers, considering um, AWS uh, with Spectrum Protect. Um, some of the security things were uh, issues that they, they liked were it's, it's much easier to get off-site copies of data. I think Isaiah referred to that. Also, a lot of them traditionally have used tape, uh, various tape operations, and there's some uh, security exposures there from you know, a lost volume or crushed volume. Um, so, so improved security has been identified as one of the benefits with cloud. And of course, some of the traditional cloud benefits of reducing IT personnel costs, um, reducing on-premise infrastructure for, for, in this case, for data protection. Um, so these are just some of the, and reducing complexity by not having to manage uh, uh, physical resources on-premise. So these are just some of the, the key uh, operational values and, and business values and financial values that our customers are seeing leveraging Amazon Web Services with IBM Spectrum Protect. Okay, so let's look uh, at several common ways that AWS is being used to, to uh, deliver data protection services. In other words, why is cloud becoming so popular for data protection and disaster recovery? One of the, one of the original use cases that, that's still very, very common and, and growing very, very rapidly is backup as a service. So basically taking what used to be sometimes very sophisticated on-premise um, enterprise backup uh, operations. Uh, for smaller companies, they might even be non-existent backup operations um, and, and, any, and anywhere in between. And so it's taking those operations and actually pushing them out, hosting them completely in Amazon, taking away the infrastructure that's on-premise. There's a lot of value in this, and as I said, this is very, very popular, and it, this use case continues to grow very rapidly, um, hosting backup as a service in AWS. It's very, very attractive, especially to our smaller businesses, um, where they don't have to worry about backup infrastructure or operations for data protection and recovery on site. Also, you can have pay-as-you-go models. Uh, I would say with Spectrum Protect, um, typically we see this as being delivered backup as a service, especially for uh, lower-end customers, being delivered by, by managed service providers or cloud service providers such as you'll, you'll hear talk, talking to us, um, one of our partners, Nee Harry, which we'll hear from in a few minutes. So this, again, is a very popular uh, use case for, for data protection and moving it to the cloud and Amazon. Um, some of the other ones, especially for, say, enter, more enterprise, larger mid-market or enterprise uh, businesses, there, there's sometimes there's a lot more, you know, uh, what, what's the word, compliance and, and other regulations and demands on the data protection and recovery operations. Um, and so uh, there, there's other architectures that have to be deployed. And, and again, Amazon AWS is being used in various uh, configurations here. Uh, as I start here, I just want to continue on with real quickly with what Isaiah introduced as IBM Spectrum Tech. IBM Spectrum Tech is one of the industry's leading data protection, data recovery, data archive and disaster recovery solutions. Um, it's being deployed, as I said, in AWS in many, many uh, instances and in many architectures, um, including the, the backup as a service that we saw. And then some of the architectures here, just a couple uh, to look at real quickly here, some of the other uh, variety of ways that Amazon Web Services is being used with IBM Spectrum Tech. Starting in the upper left, this is the idea, and I think Isaiah also referred to this, where you're pushing data, backup data, or archive data into Amazon, uh, typically through the S3 interface uh, for, for long-term, low-cost storage. So this is very, very popular. Basically, you take your regular Spectrum Protect operations, and instead of putting the data on disk or tape or virtual tape on-premise, um, you're pushing it out to a cloud. 
and taken advantage of, of Amazon S3. Um, Spectrum Protect brings many advanced features to this uh, optimization with Amazon, for instance, policy-based data management, uh, a pure incremental forever approach on premise, and then after that incremental, you're doing deduplication, compression, encryption for security. Uh, Spectrum Protect also has a unique feature with Amazon uh, Web Services with their S3 interface where we do uh, high performance buffering uh, before we write to S3, and this has been very, very effective in improving uh, uh, the integration between Amazon and Spectrum Protect. Also, Spectrum Protect has hybrid cloud data management, so it doesn't matter whether you're on-premise or your backups are on-premise or, or in Amazon, we seamlessly manage that. Okay, so this is basically for primary backup and archive data in the upper left. If we go counterclockwise to the lower left, this is sort of long-term archiving or disaster recovery copies um, of backup data. And then if you, uh, in this case, I, I should mention that you'll notice there's a second Spectrum Protect here, and it's actually, in this case, you actually host a Spectrum Protect server, data protection server, in the Amazon cloud. And so this is, again, a different variation in architecture uh, that's very, very popular with our uh, partners and customers. If you go to the lower right, it's sort of a variation of that, which is, okay, what do I do for recovery? So once I'm in the cloud, you'll see the Spectrum Protect, uh, both Spectrum Protect servers here are in the cloud. Um, in Amazon, and you're actually doing various recoveries from, you know, individual applications like databases to whole, you know, say virtual machines or, or whole uh, uh, data center sites. Uh, and you can spin those up in, in cloud infrastructure in Amazon. And then in the upper right, another use case uh, that's been becoming more and more popular is actually using Spectrum Protect, again hosted in Amazon uh, cloud, but for backing up born in the cloud workloads on Amazon. So there's a lot of uh, you know, growing workloads that are being developed and growing in the cloud for analytics, social mo mobile app apps, et cetera, and that they're all creating data. That data typically has to be protected, and in this case, we're applying enterprise data protection um, discipline with Spectrum Protect in the cloud next to those new workloads. Okay, so all of these use cases can be managed by client or What's more popular uh, quite often is, is service providers uh, deliver these kind of capabilities. So we see the whole range of architectures and a variety of configurations uh, depending on the customer's current operations, what they're trying to do with Amazon and how they're looking to leverage the cloud, um, and, and what their strategies are for both data protection, um, their migration and data center strategies, as well as their cloud strategies. So we see a, a wide variety, but this is, gives you a feel for some of the different architectures and the way that uh, Spectrum Tech is being used with Amazon. Okay, real quickly to, to finish up here, some of the key considerations for, for data protection in the cloud. Um, make sure, you know, sometimes smaller companies don't think about some of these things until there's a data loss and that's often too late. Larger companies know that they may lose money or even go out of business if their business data is not protected. You need to bring, as you're considering cloud for data protection or actually for any part of your business, you need to bring that same kind of discipline that you used on-premise uh, over, over the years in managing your data and your business applications. And so you leverage the cloud in a similar way as you would responsibly with um, data on-premise. Uh, so cloud offers new architectures, new savings, uh, new, new service levels potentially, but make sure you're, you're thinking through the architecture, make sure you're thinking through how it's going to uh, um, be leveraged so you're doing it effectively. I like to tell, as a cloud consultant, I like to tell my clients, cloud responsibly. And this means bringing that data, enterprise data uh, disciplines to as you deploy your solutions, including data protection and disaster recovery, into the Amazon cloud. Um, another thing to consider um, at the bottom there is how are you going to measure what you're doing and your success in the cloud? Some of the things to look out for and, and maybe try to measure would be recovery time service levels that you, you're looking at as you move. Make sure you're considering those. Um, compliance audits, um, how are you able to do those? Um, disaster recovery testing, sometimes this isn't even done on-premise, but as you move to the cloud, make sure you're considering that. It gives you some new ways to dynamically do disaster recovery. And also consider the total cost of ownership. Um, if you're not if you're not careful, you you might not be achieving the goals that you want to. Cloud has tremendous opportunities and potential savings for you 
But make sure you're thinking through it and doing what's most effective for you and your business. Okay, finally, um, let's get to the real meat of this discussion and webinar, which is let's let's turn this time over to um, a customer and a, and a partner that are actually leveraging uh, Spectrum Protect and Amazon to effectively run data protection in their business. So I'd like to introduce you, first of all, to our service provider, which you'll hear from after in, in a few moments, which is Nihari, uh, their largest IT service provider in Iceland. They support Icelander Group, and we'll hear... Uh, from them right now. Uh, but they have incorporated Amazon S3 into their backup and recovery as a service offerings, um, which they have uh, for a number of years have effectively leveraged Spectrum Protect. So with that, I'd like to turn the time over to Elizabeth Haldor's daughter, who is Director of IT Operations for Icelander and Air Group. So Elizabeth, I turn it over to you. Hi, thank you. My name is Elizabeth, and thank you for joining. Um, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to start with uh, telling you a little bit about uh, Icelandair. Icelandair or Icelandair Group was uh, founded in 1937. It's Iceland's largest co cooperation. Uh, it compromises with nine subsidiaries in aviation and tourism. So we have like hotels and and, and tourist offices. Uh, Icelandair. Uh, is uh, the largest company, and the IT systems or, or are controlled from Iceland Air. Uh, Iceland Air is uh, the international airline. Uh, uh, we have been working with Niheri for for several years to to make our environment a, a, a better for our customer. Uh, our Desired outcome. We are implementing our digital strategy, and as a part of it, uh, uh, is how we are looking at our infrastructure. and And we started last summer, uh, 2016, to to move our infrastructure that uh, is customer facing to Amazon Web Services. Uh, our most critical services will be there, and and we are actually launching them in next June. Um, the reason is to respond faster to changes in our marketing, for example, our marketing chain, so we want to be able to scale our environment up and down quickly. Uh, all, of, all of this is uh, due to our focusing on serving our customers better and creating a, a, a completely new digital uh, experience for our customers. Uh, the reason why Iceland Air Group chose to go to to Amazon Web Services in the beginning was uh, to, 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 to deploy our services over multiple multiply available zones and focusing on on the rapid, as I mentioned before. And our decision after looking into other solutions was that Amazon Web Services is fitting very well to our future digital strategy. It's cost effective, and together with Nieri, we have been working on building uh, building that up. Uh, our next step was then looking at our backup and recovery plan, and we have been using uh, TSM for many years. And uh, the next step was how can we backup our cl 